Now, in terms of talking about a service's lifecycle, what we're really doing here is moving beyond the on-demand services. Remember that when we talked about a simple on-demand service, basically it was started when there was work to do, it stayed alive as long as there was work to do, and as soon as that work was done, it terminated. Right? We can actually go much beyond that. Right? We actually have a lot more of the interaction available to us than that. They don't have to be limited to performing simple tasks. Right? A service can actually be doing all kinds of things in the background even when there's no direct request being made of it. It may do that very often to have information available so they can be brought to, brought to the uh, request very quickly. Services are also useful for providing certain kinds of user features. Uh, most music players on Android are implemented as services. Right? So in this module, we're going to talk about these kind of first two points here about going beyond performing simple tasks and actually having a service that controls its own lifetime much more directly. And then in an upcoming module, we'll talk more about those user-oriented features that are available from services as well. Now, at the heart of implementing services is the service class. All services inherit from the service class. So we put together and created that on-demand service that inherited from the intent service class. Intent service, in turn, inherits from the service class. The key thing about intent service was that it actually took care of most of the default behaviors, most of the things that are involved in managing the lifetime the intent service class did for us by basically implement, implementing a very simple lifetime. Now, the life cycle of a service is exposed through three primary methods. The first method is the onCreate method, and that method is called when an instance of the service class is first created. Right, that instance is created in response to a request for work to do in response to a start service request. Now any given instance of a service class gets exactly one on create. Right? So that's where we're going to kind of do any initial startup work. Now remember we mentioned previously that the start service method is kind of a misnomer. Right? It's kind of more of a dispatch work. Right? Because if multiple clients call start service or the same client calls start service over and over again, right, that really is just kind of handing off work to us. And so the way the lifecycle works is that on the first call to start service, on create fires, then on start command fires, on the next request to start service, if that service is already running, right, on start command fires directly, there is no on create. Right? So on start command can fire over and over again. And then the final part of the lifecycle is on destroy. Right? And on destroy is really kind of a complement method to on create. Right? It's called exactly once for uh, any given service instance. And basically, it tells your service that it's being shut down. It may be shut, being shut down due to a stop request. It may be being, being shut down due to the operating system simply saying that there's no resources available. You have to stop. Right? So on creates where you do your first, your first kind of setup of things. On destroy is where you tear it down. On start command is where you do all your work. Now, to illustrate the way that all works, if we take a look here and say we have some component, right? That component wants to use our service. So that component calls start service. When they call start service, the operating system goes ahead and creates an instance of your start, excuse me, of your service class, then fires your on create method and your on start command. Right now, now that you're up and running, as long as you're still running, if another component comes along and calls start service, right, in that case, simply on start command fires, right, because that's where you're going to do your work for that service. And if yet another component comes along and calls start service, Again, it's going to call just on start command, right? Because your instance of your service is now up and running. Now, as you're up and running, any component can come along and make a stop request from you. It can be any one of the components that made the start service request, or it can be some completely new uh, component out there that simply says, hey, stop service, right? That fires your on destroy, and of course, uh, destroys the instance of your service class. Right now, if any of these components comes along again, called start service, because you were shut down, right? This time your on create will be called again, right? And your on start command. And as I mentioned, in addition to an external component being able to stop the service, a service can also choose to stop itself. When it calls stop self, it's on destroy gets called as well, and that component again goes away. 